I've always been a huge proponent of The Miz having a mid-card title in WWE. For a long time, I felt like he's the mid-card MVP of WWE. He really is. He's quality. He really, really is. And back in a few years ago, I always thought it was really important to have The Miz have one of the mid-card titles because you would have two to three stories that mattered. You would have the world title feud if Cena wasn't involved. If Cena's not involved in the world title feud, then the feud involving Cena. And then when Miz was the IC or US champion, the feud involving the Miz. So you would potentially have three stories that matter, three stories that the company cared about, three stories that had the possibility of making some type of impact or potentially being good. Now, when you wouldn't have one of those mid-card titles on the Miz, it would typically flounder and the company wouldn't care and the guy that had the prop, the belt, wouldn't get over anymore, the feuds wouldn't matter, it would just be random stuff, you're throwing them in as pre-show fodder for the pay-per-view and so on and so forth. And then if you threw Cena into the world title picture, you had your one feud. And you're throwing all of your eggs into that basket and it was a major problem for the product. So. I just feel like from a depth standpoint, in terms of the product, it's better when The Miz is the mid-card champion. doesn't mean he can always be, but I feel like it's better when he is. But you can imagine my surprise this past Monday night on Raw when I watched as Roman Reigns won the Intercontinental title from The Miz. I was stunned. I was absolutely stunned that this company pulled the trigger and made this decision. Because in part... I'm not a fan of taking guys that you've invested so much into as being top guys and as major stars and basically bringing them down a notch and saying now you're a mid-card champion. It kind of affects the whole hierarchy of the characters and the product and maybe it doesn't matter, maybe it is overthinking it, but maybe it does matter and maybe it's not overthinking it at all. It kind of speaks to that thing of there is no difference between so many of these guys because anybody could have any title in the company. And I guess it depends on your half full or half empty perspective. The half full perspective says that those other titles that aren't the world title can still mean a whole lot. The half empty part would sit there and say, well, that just drops the world title and that drops these other guys down. It doesn't elevate these mid card titles as props. And that's kind of the way I look at it. Maybe I skew negatively, fair, fair enough, fair enough. But we don't need any internet rumors. We don't need any dirt sheets. We don't need any spoilers to tell us as of this moment, and granted things are always subject to change, we know what the WWE is thinking right now. We know it. We can see it. We can sense it. We can feel it. They're basically trying to do some Hogan Warrior redo crap for WrestleMania 34. Champion versus champion. Title versus title. Roman Reigns, the Intercontinental Champion, versus Brock Lesnar, the Universal Champion. The main event you got, even if it's the main event most of you didn't want. This is just strange on so many different levels. Number one, you've been building to Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar for a year. And you're going to continue to do so. Everybody knows that's where you're going. Everybody can feel that. Everybody can sense that. And the company knows it, feels it, and senses it. At this point in time, while you could say you want to maybe throw a different dynamic in there to try and spark interest in it, there's also something to be said about if you're already going there and utilizing other things is really not going to make much of a difference one way or another, which I would argue it's not going to make much of a difference one way or another, WrestleMania is going to sell out and a lot of people aren't going to care about this match. So what does it really matter? So in that particular case, why would you take your mid-card title and lump it in with your world title heading into WrestleMania. And instead of using those two props for two different stories to make two matches really matter, you take those two props, those two titles, and you put them into one match where they don't really matter any more than they already do. It's just ridiculous to me. And then on top of that, thinking about it, it the, the, the thing is, if you want to get away, and maybe the WWE doesn't, but if you want to get away from the John Cena 2.0 comparisons, perhaps you shouldn't literally foul almost to the letter the John Cena style of booking. 
which includes trying to put a mid-card championship on him, then having him have an open challenge, so that way some of the hardcore fans that value the in-ring action above all else can sit there and soften a little bit on him because they're like, oh, the guy puts on decent matches, and they kind of get fooled in this false sense of security like it's an entirely different guy when it absolutely isn't. So all the while what's going to happen is this guy is ultimately going to steamroll through several other people until he gets to a match that actually matters. And if Roman Reigns is doing some type of open challenge here with the IC title on Raw each week, which you figure he's probably going to do, it feels like that's what's exactly going to happen. It's going to be one big circle jerk and one grandiose waste of ever-loving freaking time because you feel like every match is either going to end with Roman winning or there's going to be some type of wishy-washy crap. If you feel like you know the result, why would you bother caring? Why would you get emotionally invested? I don't know. Then also knowing that I believe the Royal Rumble is Philadelphia this year, there could be a very good chance that not only are you taking now the IC title and throwing it on Roman Reigns and putting it into this mix, you're also talking about potentially putting him in the Royal Rumble and having him win the Royal Rumble again to go and face Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 34. So you're taking two things, the IC title and a victory at the Royal Rumble, that really don't technically need to be a part of this, especially with the brand split. You could have somebody win the Rumble and go challenge the SmackDown champion, which probably works better in this case. You're talking about tying up both your most important mid-card title and just took it off of a great mid-card champion in The Miz. And then your Royal Rumble match, you're talking about throwing behind Roman Reigns again. Just so that way we can get to Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar main eventing WrestleMania for the world title again. And you, and you sit there and you get to the point and you're like, all the years they pounded and forced and shoved Cena down your throats and up your arses. It, they didn't even go to this level to try and get Roman Reigns over. It is honestly to the point where it's getting really borderline pathetic. How many more things do you have to throw at Roman Reigns in order to try and get him over. Furthermore, how many more things do you have to try and throw in to make Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar 2 happen and work at WrestleMania 34? And my argument is this. If you have to go to this varying lengths of degree in order to try and make this work the second time around, maybe just maybe WWE, this isn't the match for you. This isn't the match for your company and this isn't the match for the show in WrestleMania in New Orleans come April. When you talk about special attractions, big time feature matches and main events of WrestleMania, typically you don't have to throw a lot behind them. You especially don't have to throw a lot of extra shenanigans behind it. It's nice if you do, but it's not a requirement. It is not a necessity. Like, you can sit there and say, Hogan Rock WrestleMania 18, even though it wasn't the main event, it did not close the show because God had to main event that WrestleMania. Ugh, oh, good call! Literally all you had to do with Hogan and Rock is have Rock issue the challenge, Hogan accept, and they didn't have to touch for a month, and you would have been just fine. You did that other stuff because you wanted to, you felt like it could help, but it wasn't really needed, it wasn't required, it wasn't necessary. And they didn't have to sit there and put one of the world titles on Hogan and one of the mid-card titles on The Rock in order to try and make this match matter. Same thing with Austin and Rock at 15. It was the first time they faced off in the main event at Mania. Two years later, you went a different path with Austin Rock 2 at Mania, but you still didn't have one of them with the world title and then one of them with the IC title or one of the other mid-card titles to try and go above and beyond because ultimately you didn't need to because these guys were big enough megastars without all that other extra bullshit. The title in some ways kind of became secondary. And now we're getting to the point where it feels like we just randomly took the belt off of The Miz at the whim of Vince and or Hunter. Probably Vince in this particular case because apparently he's drinking the Kool-Aid. He's now firmly a believer of Captain Cockfist. And look, if this is the direction the company wants to go, fine. I do not fundamentally have an issue with Roman Reigns being a top guy for WWE. However... We are repeating some of the same mistakes of the past, and that cannot be denied. And at some point in time, we have to look and say, if you have to throw this much behind one guy, and you have to do this much and go this much over the top and put this much effort into it, 
is he really that right guy? Is he really that type of top guy? And is he really the guy that you want to throw all that behind? Because how much more do you have to throw behind Roman Reigns in order for it to work? A Shield reunion? Icy title reign? Another freaking Royal Rumble victory? Another main event? For the world title at WrestleMania with Brock Lesnar? Hogan versus Warrior at WrestleMania 6. This is not, ladies and gentlemen, and we all damn good and well know it. This is crap. That's what this is. Pure, unadulterated, Roman Reigns forcing crap. To get to a match that a lot of us just honestly don't care that much about and that aren't that excited to see. Even especially knowing what they've been doing, you're not having Roman Reigns lose, you're not having Brock Lesnar lose, you're not having anybody now kick out of the F5, so that way, now we also throw that at Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, is when Brock Lesnar hits him with one, two, or three F5s, Roman's going to kick out of all of them, oh my god, who can stop the freaking Samoan machine here? It's unbelievable. This is madness. The Miz should still be the IC champion. He could help elevate somebody. He could be a part of a really good story with somebody. And granted, without the title, maybe he doesn't need the title anymore, and that could be an argument to make. He could still have a really good story. Like, look at last year, I will say, in Miz's defense. Who wanted to see that mixed tag with him and Maurice versus Cena and Nikki? Not a lot of us, but by the time we got to Mania, Miz and Maurice were freaking rock stars. Cena and Bella look stupid, frankly. Of course, Breakfast Club business indicated they won, and they got the phony-ass proposal and all of that, blah, 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 blah. But damn it all! Why do we have to ruin good things for one guy? We did this before. And now, unfortunately... Cena's at the height of his popularity in some sense from a mainstream perspective, and he's barely there with WWE anymore. So the company put over a decade of force behind this guy for ultimately other entities, other media, other entertainment to reap the rewards. Why would you do the exact same thing with Roman Reigns? And if you have to go this far, what does that say with Roman Reigns? And furthermore, if you have to go that far, what does it say about Brock Lesnar? And doesn't it beg a very important question of why you would continue to keep Brock Lesnar and pay him all this money? Because at what point in time do we really start to question what type of attraction he really is? Because special attraction, my ass, special attractions don't show up on Raw in front of half-empty arenas. Period. This is crazy. This is ridiculous. This is one of these things where the company and the leadership of the company just stubbornly dig in their heels and no matter what anybody says, they're just going to do it. And you know what? It's their company. It's their right. It's what they want to do. It's what they're going to do. And all the harping and complaining by me and others at this point in time isn't going to do anything. And in the grand scheme of things, this is like so many other things creatively right now with WWE. One way or another, it just doesn't matter. But it doesn't mean that I'm okay with throwing the IC title around Roman Reigns. One is enough enough.